Hi folks, um, I'm just going to run through with you what I'm doing here. Um, this could be described as an open cut pour, um, but I'm using actually baking cutters and you need to lay the paints up equally in the same way. If you didn't have a baking cup, you would use, sorry, a baking cutter, you could use a cap. You cut it in half with the widest end face down. And then this means that you're all ready to release the paint once you've layered your caps. Um, so you don't have to flip it like a flip cup and you're in more control of how the paint, how and when the paint comes out. So you do need just a small amount of base whale base white layer underneath before you put your cookie cutters down and then you can start slowly releasing your paint into the white puddle around and then it will reach the point where you can see there's not much space left so then you can add your another base white layer around those three caps and then you can go again you really need to take your time releasing the cap so that you're going to get some really nice effects otherwise if you just pick them up in all in one go it would be a similar effect to a flip cup and then you wouldn't really have much control of which which way the paints were going and um, you wouldn't get the same result um, so you'll just see that if I picked up one I've picked up the middle one and then the other one I've done it so I'm picking them up equally at the same time and then holding it for a few seconds to release the last of the paint before I take it off the canvas giving it a quick blow with a torch this helps to create some cells um, the three colors that I've used is only three colors so it's pretty easy to do you don't have to have a lot of um, paints to achieve it it's Prussian blue, titanium white, and a rusty metallic. And the only color that I actually put the silicon in was the white, not the base layer, but the white that I was putting into the caps. Um, so if you can use silicon, that's where you, you do need to have a blowtorch so that you can bring the silicon to the top and burst any air bubbles and that will help you to create cells um, and then you're good to start to tilt your canvas take your time with this so then you can keep an eye on what's going on all around the canvas this is speeded up quite a few times so it's, um, so you can't see that actually I'm, I'm taking my time is a slow process you do have to have patience um, and you do have to have a silicone stick so you can pick any lumps of paint out or bits of hair or anything that's dropped into it. Um, I would just encourage anybody really, if you haven't had a go of acrylic fluid art or some people call it acrylic pouring, now's the time to have a go. Um, you will need to have a pouring medium made up so that you can mix your acrylic paints into it. Um, because normal acrylic paint is not actually that fluid and if you want to know how to make your pouring medium which for me is just PVA glue and water um, I have a new another YouTube video um, and it'll say on their pouring recipe and then you just mix your paints I normally do one part paint to four parts pouring medium and then when you see it running nicely off the stick like warm honey then you know um sorry like runny honey then you know you've you've got the mix right so when you're using your blowtorch you don't want to just do it all over willy-nilly because you're trying to add something to the composition that you have in front of you um so you can see me going over some areas more than others and um, to see what effects will happen. Sometimes you'll leave it, come back to it a bit later on because the cells will keep on developing over time. So it's a bit like watching magic at work, which is good. So um, this canvas 
is 16 inches by 20 inches, I believe, but you could do the same thing with a much smaller canvas and then just use one cup in the center and that would just work really, really well. Um, and then sometimes what you can also do is once you've layered the paint up in the cup before you start to release the paint, you can get your cocktail stick and do some swirls and mix your paint up a little bit more and then slowly start to release the paint out. So unfortunately you will have some paint that's wasted and go off onto your plastic sheet but I like to leave mine to dry and then um, what I've been doing recently is I cut them up and I have made some jewelry, so I just make some jewelry out of them, some pendants and hopefully I'll do some more jewelry with this when it's finished and um, that will make some interesting pieces, maybe I'll diversify into earrings as well, who knows so here we have the final result I say the final result, the final wet result when it's dried, I will take a picture and put it up on Facebook for you to have a look. Um, obviously at this point, if, if you're on a mobile phone, it'd be better to, to pause it and actually um, do it on the tablet or computer so you can see much, much clearly how the results have come up because you can't really see much on a mobile phone. But I'm really, really happy how that's come out. I really like the fact that um, you've got the different tones of blue in there. I only poured obviously one colour blue, but everything mixes as you tilt and you get different colours coming from those three colours. That's my final piece at the end. Sorry about the wobble. And these are the matching coasters I've done the day before.